Hello, and welcome to ATP Report. I'm Barry Newsbaum. We have a very special friend of the family on with us this morning. But before we discuss all the important topics, I want to remind all of you out there in ATP land, if you haven't done it yet, please take out your cell phone, take out a blank text message and text the word truth, T-R-U-T-H in the message box and address it to the number 88202, push send. You'll be automatically subscribed to this and all of our content at ATP. It'll come directly into your cell phone in the palm of your hand, absolutely for free. Okay, did you do it? Thanks. Our special guest today is Claire Lopez. As you know, um, Claire is on with us on a regular basis. She's a former big shot with the CIA and the State Department. She knows everything about international and domestic policy of the United States government, of which she was a very significant part of for a very long time. And she is the founder of Lopez Liberty LLC. Good morning, Claire. Hello, Barry, and uh, very glad to be with you um, once again. Okay, let's jump right into it. Um, as you pointed out when we discussed earlier, there is a new COVID-19 virus that is the Omicron variant. Um, I, I find it very curious that the WHO that names these things skipped over some letters that they could have picked because they didn't want to suggest or hint or even signal that this virus that is disrupting the world like never before in history is tied to the Chinese Communist Party and their Wuhan virology lab. Um, the entire world pretty much agrees this came from there. But what I don't understand is why the frenzy now about Omicron, when the doctors in South Africa that actually discovered it have said, it's pretty mild. It's sore muscles, fatigue, and a cough. Yeah, no, exactly right, Barry. And you know, going in order through the Greek alphabet, the uh, next letters would have been nu and u and she, x i. Now, they skipped nu because it sounds too much like n e w, uh, something novel or new, right? Uh, but they skipped she for rather other obvious reasons, I suppose. Uh, but yeah, as you say, Omicron, um, as it's now called, um, is uh, nothing very worrisome, it seems to me. Uh, turns out that it was not even first uh, discovered in South Africa, but rather in Western Europe, it turns out now. And as of today, it seems that we have the very first case, probably of a number to come, of this variant in the United States. Now, the thing about viruses, any virus, is that they mutate. This is what viruses do. And typically, the viruses will mutate to a more contagious form, uh, but less lethal, um, lower death count, lower serious, uh, serious um, uh, sickness. And, and so it is with this one. Uh, as, as you say, Barry, the, the, uh, the South African doctors who've spoken up cannot imagine what the big hullabaloo is about because this is a mild version with mild symptoms and absolutely nothing to be worried about. Uh, and yet um, the, uh, the Western world at least and the United States um, going into an absolute tizzy about this, uh, which simply doesn't make sense. Well, we're not doctors, um, but we both have studied this quite a bit. And I, I do know this, and I know you know it as well, that the nature of viruses is to mutate. Um, they get more contagious and they get less aggressive in terms of affecting your health as they mutate. Um, this is a flu, as all COVIDs are. And every year we get a different variation of the flu because between the start of the flu season and the end of the flu season, it has mutated many times. Um, however, as you point out, this is being treated like it's a world outbreak of Ebola or something like that, where, oh my gosh, we've got to get a booster for Omicron. And then there'll be a booster for the one after that and the one after that. Is this being used as a permanent excuse factory to vaccinate forever? Well, not just vaccinate, but control totalitarian government centralized authority control over populations. But, but here's the thing, um, 
you know, as as uh, the, these viruses um, mutate, um, the the insertion or the 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 uh, introduction of vaccine, that's air quotes, of course, because what we have are actually genetic gene therapies, but vaccine after vaccine after booster after booster absolutely does nothing but turbocharge the natural process of evolution of viruses uh, to mutate into less dangerous, more contagious, quicker to get to herd immunity forms. But, but constantly uh, introducing more boosters does nothing but add to Darwin's natural selection process of evolution. That is those variants, those mutations of the virus that seek to escape the boosters and whatever else is being brought against it, they're the ones that are gonna survive and propagate. And the more you boost, the more incentive as it were, we're anthropomorphizing here a bit, but uh, the, the virus has uh, to mutate in different directions. And indeed, as we see with this Omicron variant, it's got something like 50 mutations in its genomic sequence, 32 of which are located where? specifically on the receptor binding domain of the spike protein, that part of the virus that is being targeted by these various and sundry uh, booster shots. Well, of course, the virus is going to eventually evade those and the ones then that succeed go on to propagate. The good news, of course, again, we have to emphasize is more contagious, less lethal. Well, let's talk about totalitarian control of people that really are not desirous of that control and that domination. Our two international frenemies, and I'm referring to Russia and uh, mainland China, are led by Putin and Xi, and they are now becoming buddy-buddy, and they are signing military cooperation agreements that seem to be, and I mean this literally, uh, terrifying from the perspective of the American military. They're flying bombers over borders. Um, Taiwan is being threatened on a daily basis by uh, the communist Chinese. Uh, Russia is making no secret of the fact that they're just about to gobble up the Ukraine. What happened to American foreign policy, Claire, that would have allowed this to happen? It is a tremendous shift in alliances worldwide that is isolating the United States at a time where we may not be able to handle the consequence. Well, it's it's very serious uh, and of concern. The yes, you're right, Barry, the entire world is looking at the current administration in Washington, DC and perceiving weakness. And so indeed, uh, just recently, uh, Vladimir Putin, president of Russia and Xi Jinping, um, the, uh, the leader of the Communist Party of China, um, got together and signed cooperation agreements. Not quite a defense pact, it's not that exactly, but it is an agreement to collaborate on such things as joint uh, war games, exercises, patrols in the region of the Far East, that sort of thing. Um, but at a time when exactly both of these countries uh, are, are developing um, very advanced and sophisticated new weapons like in the hypersonic category, hypersonic glide vehicles and hypersonic cruise missiles against which Mach 5 and above speeds and maneuverability and China demonstrated ability to fire a missile from the HGV while in flight, those developments should concern us all. They are worrisome. It is our, our uh, adversaries, our enemies uh, in, in, in the world getting together because they perceive such weakness in Washington, D.C. No question. And speaking of weakness, I mean, we <laughs> I guess it's bad news day, Barry and Claire. Um, Iran is back at the table in Vienna for the new JCPOA. Uh, the American delegation is not even allowed to be in the room. Uh, the European delegates come out and tell the Americans what's going on inside. But here's the breaking news, which just stuns me. Um, the IRGC commander uh, has 
literally said every day this week that the goal of Iran is to destroy Israel and wipe all the people out there uh, as a prerequisite to any new deal, as if it's going to happen in the next, I don't know, week. Um, and in response, Israel is making very clear they are preparing to move against Iran. So while Iran is supposedly wanting to make a deal with the United States, Western Europe, and the rest of the world, they're promising on a consistent basis, Israel must be destroyed immediately. And then at the exact same time that Iran has made it very clear, and the world knows this to be true, that there is so much enhanced uranium that has been produced by the centrifuges going 24-7, they may be within days of numerous bombs if they're not already there. And on top of that, the IAEA has given up on inspections because A, they can't get into all the sites, Iran won't let them, and B, where they put up the cameras to watch when they're not there what's going on, Iran destroyed the cameras and said you can't put them back. What are we doing there, Claire? Why, why, why is this so important? for the United States to capitulate. Well, remember many of the officials currently serving in the Biden administration were also serving in the prior uh, Barack Obama presidency uh, administration. And they are now back and they have, they were the ones who originally negotiated the first July, 2015 Iran nuclear deal. And now they are back to try to put it back in place. But here's the thing. I mean, not only did uh, the IRGC commander of the aerospace force, that's who that was, Amir Ali Hajizadeh, uh, threaten again, I mean, this is par for the course to wipe Israel off the face of the earth. Um, but the Iranians are really in this for one purpose and one purpose only, and that is to get out from underneath sanctions. That's what they want. The Biden administration already has eased up on some sanctions, holding back still on others. Uh, but you're right, at the talks, which have just reconvened uh, in Vienna, Austria, uh, the Americans are not even in the room. The P5 plus one, that's the permanent five of the uh, United Nations Security Council, um, which would be aside from the United States, UK, France, Russia, China, plus one Germany, the EU are represented in there along with the Iranians. And yeah, uh, the United States has to hear about what goes on from the Europeans who step out of the room and come tell them from time to time. Uh, but again, the, the objective is to get out from underneath the sanctions. There is no intent whatsoever on the part of the Iranians uh, to scale back any of the many violations now, not just of the original NPT non-proliferation treaty from the mid 1970s, but also now of the July 2015 JCPOA Iran deal, um, and those those violations, uh, you know, they go from things like you just mentioned, Barry, the uh, the advanced, um, more modern, faster, better centrifuges spinning up enriched uranium day and night, uh, the pile of enriched uranium now up to sixty percent by admission, by Iranian admission sixty percent, uh, which you can actually make an explosive bomb out of that, but they're, they're a hop, skip, and a jump away from declaring themselves 90% or above, which is bomb grade, a nuclear bomb grade uh, material. They've got stockpiles of that way beyond the provisions of the nuclear, the original nuclear deal. Um, they are fashioning the metal uh, hemispheres, uranium metal milled uh, in, uh, to, to be used for, there's no other use for them, make bombs. Um, and as you say, the cameras destroyed, the IAEA inspectors not allowed in. Um, Iran is going pell-mell uh, for a declared deliverable nuclear weapons capability. And Israel is in the crosshairs, existentially far more and closer, geographically speaking, than the United States. Israel will have to deal with this with or without the United States. Wow, what a bad news day with Claire Lopez and Barry Nussbaum. <laughs> Yuck. Uh, Claire, tell our viewers where they can find out more about you and follow your work, please. 
Well, certainly right here at the American Truth Project, ATP. And you can, uh, as, as Barry mentioned, for ATP itself, you can get an on your uh, cell phone text message about videos like this one that I do with ATP by texting uh, to my name, L-O-P-E-Z, the number 88202, and you'll get uh, a link, a notification of all my videos. I also publish at the Citizens Commission on National Security. I also uh, am frequently a guest of Jamie Glazoff on the Glazoff Gang at the David Horowitz Freedom Center. And I also have published at uh, the David Horowitz Freedom Center's online front page magazine. Um, I'm on Twitter, at Claire M. Lopez, on Facebook, my name as well. And I'm on Telegram uh, with Lopez Liberty. Thank you. She's everywhere, the ubiquitous and wonderfully brilliant Claire Lopez. Thank you for coming on today. And thank you all there in ATP land for coming on and joining us today. For ATP Report, I'm Barry Newsbaum. Thank <laughs> you.